Should we close the window? Okay, we'll close the window. No, no, no. Do you think our listeners will mind in the rain? Oh, come on. Think about it. What? Think that all of our internet viewers are trolls. I Troll la la la. I better take my jumper off then. La 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 la. It's going to be very warm in here. Yes. Oh, I better take my jumper off you do the intro mike it's your turn oh uh, really yes it is welcome to the ash yes, undecided podcast with your conflicted hosts mike and sophie indeed we are i don't think we've changed our names so oh uh, yeah yeah i i'll just i'm just going to change my birth certificate right now <laughs> actually it's actually sophie how long does it take to change your birth certificate? How long did how long does it take for us to swap names again? <laughs> what is my name Sophie now? Oh, you didn't get on with the joke. Mm. Yes, your name is Sophie now. Oh, okay. So Sophie, how long does it take for you to change your name? <laughs> what? <laughs> you 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 confused me. Sophie, how long did it, did it take for me to change my name? <laughs> <laughs> so Sophie, how long did it take for you to change your... To, how long did it take for us to swap names? Ah, oh, give or take. Give or take a month. Yes, I know, right? It was a pain in the ass process. We had to go to the Justice of the Peace, right? Was it the Justice of the Peace? Yes. Yes. The nearest one was over at uh, Auckland Libraries. They're only staffed by about two or three old white men now. No, 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 no. Um, what they do is that they do a rotating system. Yeah. Where you get a... They do, like, a rotating GP system. Yeah. Um, and you'll never get the same GP for, like, for, like, a month. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So, right. Right, so that was interesting. So how did you know about the rotating GP system? Oh, yes, it's because you've dealt with them so many times. Yes. As well as, ro- as, it was as the rotating um, Justice of the Peace system, JP system. Yeah, because, because like I've never had the same GP. Or JP. Every time. I've had a different GP every time. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's sad, though. You can't build a relationship with them. No, but that's, but that's also the point. Really? Yeah. Oh. That's okay. <laughs> Anyway, um, that was a joke. We haven't changed our names. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> how, how was your week, Michael? <laughs> it was, I don't know, uh, weird. I suppose it's been a bit stressful, been a bit fun. Did lots of strange things. Cha- changed uh, where we did our pub quiz this week, so that kind of threw me up a little bit. Yeah. Had way too much sugar on that day. Yes. With his crap. Now again. Again. Yeah. So how was your week, Sophie? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I, I had a interesting Law of Contracts lecture. Really? <laughs> 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 I do not believe you, Mike. <laughs> okay, the, the names are just confusing me. It was a prank. <laughs> to see how you would react. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just pranking you even more. <laughs> oh, I've decided to set up my exam timetable, and um, I got you to check it over <laughs> <laughs> to make sure I got the correct dates. That's me. That's <laughs> <laughs> but you had so much trouble switching between desktops. No, you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Um, yeah. Well. I'd like to check over my timetable for me, and the thing is, I've got a 13-inch laptop, which does not suit a man of Mike's stature. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> what, what does a person's stature have to do with their vision? No, more, no, the fact is, you couldn't switch, switch between desktops because your fingers were too fat. Yes, yes, it was, it was, it was I like to call myself Trump Fingers. No, Trump's, no, Trump's 
fingers are small as. He's got baby hands. Baby hands. He's got the head size of a baby. Babies, you know. Yeah. Yes. Well, hands the size of his brain, anyhow. Yes. I kind of feel bad for his mother. Oh, why is that? Oh. You can only love a kid so much. Well, he did put dishonor upon his family and dishonor upon his cow. Yes, so so he, he, he would be dishonored too, wouldn't he? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, what are you doing for Mother's Day, Sophie? This is the usual. Mum doesn't like any ostentatious things, so I just got her a card. And you? I will give my mother a phone call. Okay, that's yeah. cool. But then again, um, when I was getting Mum a card, I was just wondering why on earth all the shops are screaming out, It's Mother's Day! Go treat your mother! Yeah. So, um, do you think it's, do you think holidays like these are just, you know, over-commercialised? Well, I wouldn't really class it as a holiday. Well, those special little events? Yeah, but, yeah. Like Halloween, do you think they're over-commercialised? Of course, because, yeah. Any sort of, any sort of day mm. will be commercialised. I see. Does, do you think that takes a magic out on Mother's Day? Um, m- m- maybe the lack of appreciation for a mother. Okay. Because, because it seems more and more obligated that you have to give your mother a gift. So, so the fact that, so it's more about making the mother the commercial venture rather than appreciating your mother for who she is. Correct. That's kind of losing the magic of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's rather sad, isn't it? Of course it is. Yeah. But, that being said, surely there has to be benefits to all this commercialization. Surely there has to be one benefit out there. No, because, like, you'll get the heightened expression yeah. for that day. Yeah. On the obvious day. Yeah. And and the rest of the time will be lower than the norm. True. So, therefore... No, benefits for us, the consumer. So, so I guess one benefit will be that you don't forget. <laughs> yeah. Because you're, you're, you are reminded a thousand times a day. That's an important event that's coming up. Yes. Yes. You, you, you use the offer code as yet undecided for sherrysberries.com to get a 24 pack of chocolate dipped strawberries. Sherry's berries? I've never heard of them. Mmm. That's, that's a new model, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> or, or, or uh, contact 1 800 flowers. Get a 24 pack of multicolored flowers for one dollar per rose yes and juice your mother's hay fever yes <laughs> very much so get her a bunch of flowers today so there's no really benefits in commercialization surely there has to be surely there has to be something yes and maybe the maybe the more use of theming yes and and as well as the um, with, with the offer code as yet undecided, you get a 50% off hospital visits anywhere in the US. <laughs> you'll, you'll need them. And also, with, with it, you use the exact same pop coupon code in hireassassin.co.com to actually, to actually um, I don't know, get 50% off hiring an assassin? <laughs> well, but I... But the terms and conditions includes the only target that will be valid for is Donald Trump and Mike Pence. Rather strange terms and conditions, don't you think? I thought it was so unusual, I thought it would be to spell it out. Yes, this is brought to you by the new Assassin's Creed Origins. They might even be they might even change the name for that actually. No, it was Empire, now it's Origins. They changed it they might even change it again. <coughs> no, no. No? No. Definitely. So where's that? So where's that one set? Egypt. Oh yes. Yeah. And who's the protagonist? A well, they're going to do like, oh, what's the English one again? 
syndicate? Yes. So one male, one female again? Possibly. Okay. That seems, that seems to be a rather um, common thing that games are doing now, to actually, uh, you know, um, do the whole representation thing. Yes. Male it, and female. And what, from what I hear, they're trying to amalgamate all of the best parts from this, all of the previous ones into this one. That's a hard job. Yeah. So it's like, you, ha- you have to do the ships. Because yes. um, Black Flag was immensely popular be- due to the ship um, mechanics. Yes. Um, so they're going to have a grappling hook as well, because Syndicate's grappling hook was well received. Yes. As well as the male and female thing. Yes. They also have to have somehow the, the emotional punch of Assassin's Creed 3. Yeah. Yes. And somehow have a popular character, and somehow have a character that is popular as Ezio. Yes. While still maintaining the freshness of Assassin's Creed One. Yeah. And done all the bugs from Unity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh goodness, they're going to have a hard job. Correct. Wow. Let's just not talk about Unity. Actually, that's kind of a black sheep. Well, I, well, I have every hope that it will be better than a movie. Well, how? Why is that? okay? Here's the thing: if you're a film producer, you should probably never do those two things. You should never ever make a video game film because there has never ever been a successful one, apart from apart from something like Laura. I think I think the only successful one was Tomb Raider. Yeah, that, Tomb Raider was mildly successful, and that's. That, that and Mortal Kombat. That's a Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat did a... But otherwise, video game films are not just not successful. Um, well, Assassin's Creed 1 was mildly successful. Yeah. But um, Tomb Raider was probably like the most notable exception. Yes. And the buddy was a young Daniel Craig. Yeah, I've seen that. Mm. And the second thing you shouldn't do when it comes to films, is make a Roald Dahl adaption of it. <laughs> because no matter how well you do it, it's just going to fail! Now, now this is going to be a strange question. What? What is your favourite Roald Dahl adapted movie? Adapted film? Yes. I can't answer that. I've only watched two, three. I've only watched three, four, four. Four. Okay, please, please name them. Um... Big Friendly Giant, Matilda, yeah. James and the Giant Peach, and The Witches. Okay, out of those four, yeah, which one do you like the most? Matilda. Yes. How about your favourite Roald Dahl film? Um, just the ones that have been added on. I've pretty much seen all of them. Oh, yeah? Because I was a big Roald Dahl fan when I was a kid. And I had revolting rhymes. Oh, cool! As well, it's it's tucked away somewhere. Um, I do like Matilda. Yeah. Um, but I would have to go with the original Charlie. Oh, I've watched I've watched Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the second one. Yeah, yeah, I, I like the original better. Fair enough. Yeah. I've watched bits of the ones with the, with, the, with um with Gene Roddenberry in it. Is it Gene Roddenberry? No. Someone else. Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder. I watched the stills of it. Yes. Yeah. I've seen stills of it. I mean, yeah. So why do you think they're so unsuccessful? Like just every single one of them just doesn't can't quite make their production budget. Yeah, it's it's sort of strange because because Roald Dahl was a fantastic author. Yeah, but somehow his books doesn't translate well into films. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I prefer his short stories though. Do you know that? Do you know Roald Dahl did short stories? Of course he did. Yeah. Of course he did. I prefer the short stories for some reason. No idea why. Yeah. Sure, he doesn't prefer mystery. That was uh, I, 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 well, I'm I'm no doubt going to screw it up, mm-hmm. but it is Tortoise Backwards. Isla Trot. Yes. I'm not going to pre- pronounce that. Yeah. Was that children or more towards adults? Because it was. And yeah, it was more towards teenage. Teenage. So it's an in-betweener. Yeah, it's an in-betweener. Wow. No, I prefer things like The Great Automatic Grammatizer, um, the, which was an anthropology of short stories. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. And um, 
Rodale seems to really know how to put the great twist at the end. To yes. Keep, keep you guessing until until the very last page. And my my most favourite Wild Roald Dahl book. Yeah. Was George's Marvelous Medicine. Oh wow. Okay. The, the, okay. So George's Marvelous Medicine. You have boy named George, two monkeys, mm. a cruel couple. Yeah. And the horrible grandmother. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember exactly what happens in it. I'll read it again, actually. We had a joke. Yeah. I love that book. I, I've loved that book ever since. It, yeah, it was the first book I read cover to cover. <coughs> I think it was about eight. <laughs> My favourite Roald Dahl book is either Matilda, the children one anyway, was either Matilda or the one with... Um, the one with the um, two, a father and son living near in a in state full of, full of um, phoenix, no, peasants, peasants, and the father was a poacher. Is, wait, is that fantastic, Mr. Fox? No. Okay. Father and son, they were living out in the middle of nowhere in the estate. Father, the father was an auto mechanic. Oh, um, wait, that's Matilda, ain't it? No, the no. father was an automatic ticket. We were talking about father and son. Father was an automatic ticket. The mother was dead. And um, they managed to hatch this fantastic plan to get all the peasants, peasants out of the rich guy's estate. Oh, yeah. I can't remember what it was. But it's okay. Yeah. That's a fantastic book about um, standing up for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, I, su- I suppose, um, was that book a gift to you? The book that you the first read? No, it was, it was like one of those um, library titles when you go to school libraries. What was the first gift of, what was the first gift you ever had? <laughs> I, well, I don't really know because no, no doubt it was a, um, ornamental gift. Why is that? Um... It is a, from what I know, because there's a whole bunch of ornamental gifts that I yeah. that I have that are, that have been engraved. Um, from when you were a child. Yeah, like a sterling silver. Um, what's it? What is it called? Um, egg holder. Why do they? Why do you keep on getting ornamental engraved things when you were a kid? I don't know. Um, I have a little um, silver mug with my name on it. That's very unusual. Do, do you still have it? Yes. Mm-hmm. It's in the china cabinet. Oh, yeah. Haven't been used. Um, but one of the things that... Um, one of the first things I bought for myself mm-hmm. that is still in the china cabinet... Yeah. ...is an old cavalry truck. Really? That's very sweet. Yes. L- like a... Um, like a matchbox t- car, wow. but it's a cabri truck. Yes. <laughs> and the niece and the nephew want to take it out and play with it. Don't! Yeah. It's vintage! Yeah. When, well, if you're a Chinese baby, the, one of the first gifts you ever have is a piece of jade with your um, birth animal on it. Huh. I wear it to this day. That's cool. Is there, is there anything else that you were given as a kid? Books. Toys. Not much though, I'm not too sure. Thank you. I can't really remember what I was given as a kid, really. Didn't get much. So, when we were talking about gifts here, how much thought do you need to put into a gift to make it worthwhile? Because they always say, oh, it's all, it's all it's the thought that counts. But sometimes you've just been given such crap gifts that's just, you bought it at the supermarket because you just remembered. Yeah, um, I, I'm not sure if you've noticed mm-hmm. with, with the gifts that I've given you. It's very unusual, but it's very thoughtful. Yes. Yeah, so. it, it, the, my gifts are generally constructive. Yep. Um, and no matter what happens, you're either going to use it yeah. in the future or for sentimental reasons. True. Something we actually enjoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, 
or some sort of milestone that is achieved due to me. True. How's my gifts? How would you describe them? Um. From what, from what I, from what the gifts that you've given me, mm. you have given a. I would say unusual way of getting gifts because, one, I was not expecting the gifts that I was given. I was not expecting them. Yeah. yeah. You go. You go beyond the scope of which to grab a present. <laughs> so I just don't do the normal, oh, let's just grab something from the supermarket. I always do a little bit more than that. Well, well, take 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 the gifts. The, well, the two most important gifts that you've given me. Yeah. One, you got it shipped over from China. Yeah. And two, you made it yourself. Oh, so one gift was the the blanket. Yes, which I was not expecting, <laughs> not at all. And the other gifts was the paper craft. Yes. Okay. And did you enjoy them? Of course I did. Yeah. Yeah, um, in my family we tend to go over the top because we have high expectations. Yes. Yeah. So, but, so, in the, so I, I probably put too much thought into the gifts. But that's because I enjoyed putting, I enjoy making people happy. Yeah. And so there's the other side of, you know, let's just grab some boxes of chocolate from the supermarket. How much thought do you think you should put into a gift to make it worthwhile? No, well, you just have to see the continual enjoyment on their face. Oh, yeah? Like, like in, in my example, mm -hmm. I, I, I see the blanket and I see the figurines every day. Yeah? And my most influential gift yeah. was to my nephew for, for Christmas when he was six months old. When he, yeah, just over six months old. Yeah. I got him a pedaled tractor. Really? So it was all f it was all fun and games at the start because we would just push him around. Yeah. But then when he started getting older, yeah. he would use the pedals. Oh. And that was that was completely deliberate on my part. So he would get around on his own. Yeah. Cool. So he could learn how to ride a bike with four wheels. <laughs> yeah. So he got him a mini quad bike of sorts. Yeah, a, a pedaled quad bike, <laughs> and that that he would grow into, and that was completely deliberate. That was so he put quite a bit of thought into it. Yeah, cool. And no doubt, like it'll be used forever. Well, until he until he's too big to. Well, be... of of course, but you, you know, Stella will be one to use next. Ah, uh, well, yeah. Well, she's she's almost four now. Yeah. And because of the new development. About um, the minister, the minister of education wanting four-year-olds to start school. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, there's that notion going through all all of my family's heads at the moment. It's like, should should Stella go to school? Wow. When she turns four, whereas I like to call it busy. Busy, yay. Yeah, you know, and and now we have so many nicknames. Oh, <laughs> true. Yeah, that's so cute. Yeah. So really, it's how much thought you should actually put into it. Quite a bit. You should you should always put quite a bit of thought into the gift, right? Yeah, but yeah. it's also it's also um, I'll think the most influencing variable is how, how much. You, of a, of a influence they've had on your life. True. So the more influence they had on your life, the more thought you should put into it. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your, so what's your favourite gift you had so far? Hmm. Um. Oh, that's a tricky one. Because... Like, I, I could always go back to my second bike. Yeah. Um, or a tennis racket. Cool. 
Cool. That white and red tennis racket. Because because uh, where we used to live, the childhood house. Yeah. Um. On the driveway. There was a um. Like like a stucco wall. Yeah. And I used to hit tennis balls at that stucco wall. Really? And it won't exactly come back to you at the same angle. It'll be slightly different. Oh, yeah? So I had to run around to hit it. Oh, cool. Yeah. That was good exercise. Of course. The time when you ran. (laughs) Yes, that 16K. Yeah, that was fun. Oh, man. That was fun. Um, And um, she has a podcast as well. Who? Lisa Tarmody. She's a ultra marathon. Wow. Oh, yeah, I've heard about her. What's, what's her podcast? It's called the Lisa Tarmody Podcast. The Lisa Tarmody Podcast, and she talks about running, I suppose? Of course. Yeah. What's my favourite sketch, do you think? I have no idea yet. <laughs> oh, you're a youngin'. Yeah, young one. Yeah. One day I'll find something. Yeah. Just hold on to it. So, okay, since, uh, well, what is your most important gift since you've been in New Zealand? Mm. Family. Probably the gift of acceptance, actually. Yeah. Yeah. You can't put a price on that. No, you can't. This is getting very sentimental, this podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, on to less sentimental things. Yes, uh, because um, we were actually debating... Before we did this podcast, it's like, we should make it less sentimental. <laughs> <laughs> but we can't help it. We're just two old friends just being all nostalgic. Yeah, back in my day. <laughs> when a lolly mixtures were 50 cents, not $2. I don't know, Mike. We're just sentimental people, I suppose, because we've been through a lot. I remember when 600 milk coke was a dollar fifty. So what's your favourite food then? Ah. Uh, I was a lighter subject, of course. Before we make you guys all cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, um... I just realised why Mike has loves Portal so much. Because he has a valve at the back of his head. So what, so what I need to do is turn the valve and he just starts crying. Yeah. Yes. You want to turn it? Yes. Yeah. Um, we had a tradition every Christmas. And I try to do this as long as I can yeah. um, before adulting got in the way. Yeah. Um... I would have ham sandwiches. What's wrong with that during adulthood? I know, but I try and do as much as I can, but, uh, yeah. I always had this thing where I always had a ham sandwich. You like ham sandwiches? Yes. Cool. Yeah. Now I know what to do. What's inside the ham sandwich? White bread? White bread? Ham. Ham? No cheese? No. No. Ham sandwich. Hey, isn't the ham sandwich the most common type of sandwich in London during the Victorian era? Yes, which was in a previous podcast. In a previous podcast. <laughs> this is brought to you by firealarms.co.nz. Keeping a, keeping the hostel safe since Mike farted and, <laughs> and accidentally causing an inferno. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Sophie. That was a lot of shade thrown there. No, I, no, I actually got sunburnt. Okay, no, no, let's, let's rephrase that. Keeping the hostel safe since they realised Sophie was a pyromaniac. Yes! <laughs> yes! That's why Very they, much so. That's why they're testing out the fire systems, because they know I'm here.
But now I'm here, so they're testing out the fire systems, just in case I happen just happen to have matches in my bag. Yes. Yes. Yes, because if you've known Sophie for for as long as I have, when she is influenced by glucose, yes, she becomes quite pyromany. Yes, I become hyperactive and I feel an intense desire to burn something. Yes. Yes, just like what happened on Tuesday night. She deliberately brought a candle and I had to tell Sophie to put the put the candle somewhere else. <laughs> because there has been evidence that Sophie likes to burn things. Yes. <laughs> Primarily paper. Yes. So anyway, back to the podcast, my favorite favorite food. So it's a switch it's a three way switch between dark chocolates, lemon meringue pie, and big big easy bolognese. Now, what kind of chocolate though? Dark. The darker the better. Yeah. So so. That's that's the sweet spot. Spot seems to be seventy percent. Seventy two percent. The Whitaker's seventy two percent is the best one ever. So it's 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 that sweet plus the bitterness. Yeah, bitter sweet. Yes. Yeah, like my life. <laughs> yes, um, this podcast is now brought to you by the Verve. <laughs> no, don't listen to that song. You got to you got to support an arsehole that way. <laughs> Creating symphonies since nineteen ninety eight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, we've got a ham sandwich. I've got, you have to admit, my lemon meringue pie was pretty sweet, right? It was sweet as, bro. Yeah, sweet as. <laughs> <laughs> was it sweet in both senses of the word? Yes. Uh, can I bribe you with lemon meringue pies from now on? Um, depends what you want to bribe me with first. Oh, so, like, the... Act like, oh, please do my homework. I'll give you a whole lemon meringue pie. I am not going to give you my first unborn child. <laughs> <laughs> no, only if you say my name, dude. Um, I just remembered something, right? Uh, how likely are you going to have a first unborn child? I don't know. I don't know because you have a first unborn child walking out on this earth right at this moment. Elaborate, please. Is it possible for you to have a... No, wait. Not unborn. <laughs> could you have a child? Do you think your father, Mike, by mistake? Okay, okay, okay. okay. Because you're a man. Yes, I, I am a man. Sorry. Yes, that fire alarm was just to demonstrate that the agreeableness that I am a man. Yes. Um, and, um, me and a good friend of mine have had this conversation. Yes. Out of all of the sexual partners I have had in my lifetime. <laughs> see, as soon as I mention sex, the fire alarm goes off. Yes. <laughs> so surprised that you're talking about it. Yeah, I know. And I'm being completely serial here. Mm-hmm. I have accounted for every person yeah. bar one. And she hasn't contacted you yet. Correct. So you can presume no. You can presume no. But. But how do you know that? Ooh. Ooh. Have you ever talked to her recently? Or? I have not spoken to her since I had done the deed so it was a one off of course it was <laughs> of course it was <laughs> Every, everyone else I have kept an eye on them and just to make sure well, so you've stalked them for nine months hello um Yes, preferably yes. Okay. Just to make sure that uh, they didn't have any sort of random child rolling around. <laughs> Just making sure. Oh, I 
I just... I think it's warning you that you indeed might have a child. Yeah. Yeah. Possibly. I'm freaking out here. If you, <laughs> I'm freaking out here. If you're on the, because you, you know, Mike, you're Molly, right? Yes, I I am a, Ma- I am a descended Mary. <laughs> yes. If you're in a video game, you would have a kid by now. <laughs> oh god. And the kid will be like, what? Eleven. Thirteen? Uh, okay. Fifteen? Maybe, well, 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 maybe well, well, old enough well, to do a grandfather. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. <laughs> out, out of... Out of all of the... Um, people that are, that were in my class. Yeah. You're right? Yeah. Right. Um, like, 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 most people have had kids. Yeah. Right? The oldest kid is fifteen. Right. And think about that for a second. I know why. I know this is going to be shocking to hear, but um, she was. That means that she was pregnant at the ripe old age of sixteen. Of fifteen. Fifteen. <laughs> You're old enough to be a grandfather. You know that. Y- yes, technically, yes. <laughs> Yes. Technically. Yes. You can be a grand. You can be a secret grandfather. No. So are we done a video game? Based on the fact you have to lost, lose, find your long, long lost grandchild. What do you think of entail? Um. Find yeah. find out on the new TV two show. What? <laughs> Keeping up with the canaries? No. No. Um. Okay, this will be part of keeping up with the Canaras. Michael Canara needs to find his long lost grandchild. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Seacrest, C- give me that money. That's what I say. Seacrest, <laughs> give me that money. Seacrest? <laughs> oh, what? You don't know. Keeping up with the Kid Kardashians yeah. is a Ryan Seacrest production. No, I didn't I know that. Hmm. Anyway, see, Chris, you have a fantastic new opportunity out here. <laughs> you have a 31-year-old who's trying to look for his grandkid. Yes. Well, we'll make it into... No, you don't, actually. We'll go, we'll go to make it into a video game so that, you know, it's a simulation. Grand Theft Pregnancy 4. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, um, which, so, if you're in the video game, which um, series do you think you'll be the protagonist of? <laughs> A dumb one. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't really know because um, uh, maybe maybe that there's a game called Love Thy Neighbor. Yeah. And I would be the neighbor. Oh really? Yeah. The voyeuristic neighbor or the the one that tells you to get off the property. Oh. Or as right. I'm gonna catch you. Oh, yeah. Which video game protagonist? Oh. Series will I be in? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I don't know really. It's it, it's difficult. Um, so or like that really bad CSI game. No. <laughs> Law and Order is for you. I said video game. Yeah, there's a there's a is for you game. You're oh. kidding me. <laughs> One of what, what, what those point and click ones. Oh, yes. yes. One of those crappy point and click uh, mystery games. Yes. Anything else? Um, or one of those command ones we on the Commodore 64 where you had to type it out. You're serious? Um, I'm in crap games. <laughs> it, it was games for back in the 80s. <laughs> Great. It's like you, you, like you were falling from thirty thousand feet. What do you do? Mm. So, which type of person? So, who's who out of all the people we know would be in a triple A? Would be the protagonist of a triple A game? Which person out of all the people we know?
evidently not us. Yeah, definitely not us. Yeah, can we can we can we name this podcast? Alarm bells are ringing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was rather alarming how... Oh! Oh! <laughs> right. Which person, out of all the people we know, is most likely going to be a protagonist in the triple A game? That we both know? Both of us know. Both know. Um... That basically restricts us to AUT. Yeah, no. Well, I can't think that way. Um... Oh God, Johan! Johan! Oh, is that the is that the um was he was he part of the debating club? Yeah. Oh yeah. Because an air force technician. Oh, true. How about person you know? I guess I don't really know anyone who would be in a triple A video game. You sure about that? What do you mean? You sure about that? What do you think? Who would I know that you think? Buzz the video game. Buzz, the video game. Yeah. Buzz. Buzz. What's the? It's a, it's a general knowledge game where it's like a talking head. That's you. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Blonde hair. No, no, no. Who, who, who do you know that's, maybe I don't know, that's, that's you think will be part of a triple A video game, most likely. Going to be in a triple A video game. I have no idea. Oh, no, wait. Wait, there's, there, there's a guy who was in the army... Um, I'm not going to say his name. Yeah. Um, he... Rage against the heavens? Yeah. So, um, he was in the army? Yeah, he was in the army and he used to um, work security um, for container ships. Which video game was he in? No, in, in the Indian Ocean. Against the Somali pirates. What? Which video game would he do, would you think he'd be in there? Like a mercenaries game. Like Just Cause? Yes. Or yeah, Just Cause. Yes. Or Uncharted. <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, maybe I'll maybe I'll do well in Portal. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe Uncharted. I'm not, I'm not that good with Uncharted. I'm, I'm more of a portly person, you know. But you can do the parkours. Oh, no, sorry, sorry, that's parking. Park. <laughs> I can't even do the parking. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, if we're going to be in the video games, at least they will up the representation of it. You know, you being a Maori and me being um, an Asian. That's Both of us are sorely needed in the representation front. So, why do you think... Um, okay. I have to, uh, okay, uh, under my Steam files, I'm going so sick of the situation. Every, sing every single video game that I have that has my two protagonists, I put them under default race and gender. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you think we have white male characters as the default race and gender? I don't know. Why? Generalizations. This, this is probably the best podcast ever. <laughs> why is that? Because of because of all because it's because it's so alarming with our topics. Yes. So, do you get um this bit of uh, mental dissonance when you actually play as a white man protagonist, as in you can't really immerse yourself in the game? You guess you're not the protagonist. No. No. Do you don't you don't have that problem? No. No. Lucky you. But I think it's funny that like for like fighting games is a stereotypical karate guy with a black belt. Yeah. <laughs> it is like, hi ya! Yeah. Me fight you. Me fight you. <laughs> I mean it always seems to be the American version of the same person. Oh yeah! Here's my gun! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pew pew. So anyway, why there's so many white protect white male protagonists in video games? I don't get it. Oh, by the way, um, as Mike have no, has, as Mike has um, observed before, I, I don't. I tend to get really into video games. Yes. 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 And yeah. having a white male protagonist kind of ruins it for me because I can't really project myself onto that character, 
easily. Yes. Well, most of the time, anyway. Most of the time. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. You need to play Bayonetta then. Yeah. Actually, I should. Yeah. Bayonetta, the, the first Bayonetta has just been released on Steam recently. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I brought it up. Yay! It's Portal. I love Portal for that, you know? Because finally I get to play as a female Asian! Yes. Now, now, what other games have a female Asian or not? Mirror's Edge. Yeah! You, 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 you can stereotype Faith as an Asian. I think so, she looks vaguely Asian, I suppose. Yes. She's half Asian, so. Yeah. Or Ma- May Malaysia? Malaysia? May. May. Be she an Asian? Yeah. May. Maybe she's Malaysian? Maybe she's. Maybe Asian? Maybe Asian? Maybe she's May- Malaysian? Maybe Asian? <laughs> anyway. Any other games that basically look like me? So you have Mirror's Edge. Then. Oh! Then there's Prey. Well, you can choose a female. You can choose to be a female and Prey. Yeah. Yeah. What else? Um. Bayonetta doesn't really count because um, she's British. She's uh, always oh, a minute. That means that if I don't look at her face, it'll be a right because she sounds like me. Yeah, and she has glasses and black hair. Yes. Both of us sound rather posh, so. Yeah. Right, who else would actually suit me as well? Mass Effect? That doesn't really count because you get to make the character. Yeah, that's true. Um. Final Fantasy Thirteen. Oh yeah, I'll try that out. <clears throat> so anyway, video game characters that look like you. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Because I'm really try, like... try your best. <laughs> try your best. <sighs> Come on, Sophie. Okay, something that resembles his belly. Okay, we need something that looks a little bit like Buddha. <laughs> Yes, and um, everyone's going to jump on the bandwagon and say Pac-Man. <laughs> nah, you only get you only get paid peanuts. <laughs> uh, well, or Donkey Kong Country. Uh, no, um, Mario. Yeah, Heavy Rain. Maybe. Who was the fat person in Heavy Rain? Yeah, he was the bad guy. The, really? Yeah. Oh, oh no. Yeah. You want to be the antagonist? Yeah, because like, like, he's the constable and he ended up being the bad guy. Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> um, oh no. What else? Um, uh, hey Mike, you might have to beat that out, by the way. The Heavy Rain spoilers. Yeah, it's alright. Um, Do the telephone, like... Yeah. Um, okay, so, video game protagonists, good guys that look like you. Good guys that look like a generic fat guy. <laughs> well, I've heard Max Payne 3, he did himself go as much. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Um, huh. Um... You see, we have we have an underdeveloped market here. Yeah. We should actually make more video game characters that look like me or Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, EA. Stop making that Star Wars, huh? Yeah, well, not everyone can be a FIFA football player. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, come on, not everyone has to be buff, right? How come lots of video game characters are like... Buff. What was that? What? What was that sound? My phone. I have an email. No. Yeah. Honestly, um, okay, we have to find another one. This makes pain three. That's just so sad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, this is this is this is not fair. <laughs> why are why are all the video game characters so buff? It's called thick the peel. <laughs> Does it work on you? I mean, no, no, no. 50% of video gamers are male. Yes. How do they get sex appeal from a male protagonist? 
I don't know. Are you trying to imply something here? Yeah? Well, see, okay, fifty percent of them are male. Around about ten percent of them are gay, probably. And that makes sense if they have a buff male, prote- white male protagonist. But what about the other night? What? Okay, ten percent are gay, twenty percent are bisexual. So you have about thirty percent that will be, you know, they'll get gain sex appeal from their protagon- from their white male protagonist. Some of this other 70%. Alright, I got it. Warrior. Warrior? Warrior. Warrior. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That warrior was another antagonist. Yeah. That's facts for. Are you, are you a villain? Are you destined to be a villain? Yes, I am a villain. Why are you. But, Mike, you're not a villain. You're just a big, gigantic, cuddly teddy bear. Oh wait a minute! That also makes you gold. That also makes you pretty from Five Nights at Freddy's. Yes. Ah! Honestly, if someone should make Mike a good person in a video game. <laughs> okay. Right. Right. So you have a bus. Okay. White male protagonists. You say that they're buff because of sex appeal. Yeah. So, fifty percent of gamers are female. Yeah. About. And about ninety percent of them will find the protagonist. No, about eighty percent of them, eighty to ninety percent of them will find the protagonist to be attractive. Yeah. So with thirty percent of male gamers. Yeah. That still leaves like thirty. Oh, let's see. 30. That still leaves, still leaves about forty percent of the population who still don't find them attractive. Well, the majority rule, isn't it? Oh, true. But then, oh, true. Majority rules. True. 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 But, do you feel comfortable, oh, no, but still, if we're dealing with about 60% of them finding them attractive, that's, <laughs> you're still dealing with 40% of gay, 40% is still a large percentage of people who won't find a video game protagonist to be sexually attractive, so. But it's okay, just remember that this podcast is brought to you by chocolate bars. Chocolate bars. Sophie doesn't deserve it because she's bringing up video games again. <laughs> no. I, 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 <laughs> dude, I, I... I haven't mentioned that particular game for the last three podcasts. It was only for that game. <laughs> um, it, what, is that, what is that game called, Sophie? <laughs> <not mentioned>. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, that... Still, how come, how come your typical ma- video game protagonist is the... Especially when you're dealing with eight triple A games, how come your typical video game protagonist is a white ma- white male and buff? I'm gonna go majority rules. Because, well, here's another funny thing though. Lots of female gamers don't play as male protagonists because they prefer playing as female protagonists. Yes. Yeah. Still, that means that's not majority rules then. Yeah, no, but but because of the triple A lifestyle. Yeah. None of those female oriented games would be considered to be AAA, wouldn't they? True, unless. Except recently. for Horizon Zero Dawn. Except Horizon Zero Dawn, Mirror's Edge was AAA ish? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're getting more AAA female oriented games. And Tomb Raider is so, so, so AAA. Yes. Yeah. But, um. Or, or even the OG, OG, Samus. Yeah. Honest, but honestly. Would Assassin's Creed Syndicate count? No. Because it's got two protagonists, one male, one female. Yeah. So it doesn't quite count. So, like, Mass Effect, same thing. Yeah. Uh, still, white male protagonists, why are there so many of them? Because really, they don't make up the majority. Yes, yes, why are there so many white male protagonists in the world? In the video games, why? No, or even in real life. It- Oh, true. White males have more power. Yay! Yeah. Was. So video games is just imitating real life. Yes. That's why. Unbelievable. How come fat people are considered villains all the time? And how come black people are considered villains all the time? And how come we Asians are just erased? Like we just don't exist? Sophie? Yeah? Not real. <laughs> <laughs> Real mate, I'm not. If I was in the video game, I would be a ghost. No. A voice in the machine. No, no, you wouldn't. You know, you wouldn't even be a voice in the machine. I won't even be a bit. 
Oh, well, maybe a bit. Maybe I'll be a bit. What, now, would you rather be a zero or a one? A one. A one. Why a one? I'll rather be something. Because you're always on. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll rather be something than nothing. Anyway. Oh, throwing shade again. <laughs> Mike, that means that you're a villain. Yeah, I'm a villain. I, I am Goldfinger. Yeah. So, Mike, if you're a, if you're a typical video game protect, video game antagonist, how would you take over the video game? What type of villain would you be? Oh, okay. Um. Oh, oh. I'll do this slightly differently. Yeah. But um. Like the Would You Kindly from Bioshock. Oh, so you'll be more of a um, psychological villain. Yeah. Oh. Any other villains? Um, psychological villains. Yeah, either either psycho- psychological or just straight up. I I I am the protagonist. I I, I am the villain. Doctor Eggman. You have to kill my ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Eggman, great example. Yeah. Bower. Great, great example. Bowser. Yeah. Okay, so when when can we expect completion of your evil lair? Um, my Mount Taranaki volcanic lair yeah. will be made by 2050. Okay, we shall look out for that. How many million dollars development? One billion dollars. <laughs> What would you name your white cat? I wouldn't have a white cat. Why not? I'm allergic to cats. Oh, I forgot, sorry. White, um, what would you name your white for real cat? For real cat? For real. For real? Yeah. You heard of that company? Yes, I, I have heard of that company. What but are you, you for sure? Hmm? Are you for sure? Okay. How would, what would you name your white for real cat? I would name my white furry cat Sophie. I'm not going to be Oh, I guess it's the only way I can be in the video game now. Yeah, see? Ugh. As a sidekick. As a cat. As a cat. Damn it. With ninja stars and Asian eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being reduced down to that. Yes. <laughs> a- 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 and, um,. You actually have um, paid DLC. Yeah. As you are the cat. <laughs> and, and you have to help the antagonist out by pushing all the right buttons. Oh, great. <laughs> so, what's my um, what's my secret skill? Because every game, video game character has a secret skill. Come on! Think about it. Really? I'm a cat. so that You're an Asian cat! So that I can then seduce men? No. No, ninja stars. Ninja stars flying through the air, landing on all four paws. Yeah. Parkour. Yeah. Well, there's another thing about Asians and video game characters. I think, well, oh yeah. Does it mean I'm part of the Yakuza? No. Oh, maybe. Maybe I'll be part of the Yakuza. Yakuza cat. And... <laughs> <laughs> Yaku's the cat. Yaku's the cat. <laughs> I'll be like oh, so if I was a video game I'll be like a Yakuza cat yeah. and you'll be the European boss of the Yakuza yeah. the fat European boss um, I'll, and my job will be to, to seduce men because I'm, I'm an Asian woman I'm an Asian female cat so I have to seduce men wow that is some serious bestiality right there <laughs> yeah because I thought that was the role of, you know, Asian women, like, to, to seduce the protagonist. Ah, oh, okay, 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 okay. Wait. Wait a minute. Yeah? Wait a minute. Yeah? Wait, 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 wait. I have to say this right. Yeah? I, I realise who the sub-boss is going to be. Who? Donald Trump. <laughs> well, so you're, like, your underling? Your underling? Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know what his what his downfall was? Small hands. He grabbed the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> so I killed him. Yes. So he grabbed he, gra- he so he grabbed me. <laughs> he grabbed me by the neck and I killed him with my stars. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Asian Asian seduction Asian seduction bestiality cats. That's yeah. But then just stars and parkour skills. Yeah. That's me in a video game. Do you feel happy now? Yeah, I feel happy now. How about you though? So that means that you're the European boss over overlord boss. Yes. Like a um don a Euro, an Italian don. Somehow they're always fat. Yeah. If you if you go back to Golden Eye Rogue Agent. Yeah. The ending of that. Yeah. Where basically he flips like the protagonist creates the bomb yeah. and makes it go off while he's hit, while the while Goldfinger's having this big glorified speech saying that I've got you and everything blows up. That's always their downfall, right? The big glorified speech. Yeah. Actually, um, wasn't Grand Theft Auto Five there was this um, really fat guy? It's the one of the play characters, or not really? Not really. Um, four was more because um, you had Roman, yeah, which was the main main guy's cousin, yeah. And spoilers, he also dies <laughs> at his wedding. Yeah, you die a lot. Yeah, I die a lot. <laughs> Or, or, or if you if you consider me to be a big flat blob, I can be Super Meat Boy. It dies a lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, life should treat you better, honestly. I know. Video games should treat you better. Yeah. How long have we been talking for? We've been talking for a long time now. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get us sad about video games. I'll never stop. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Should we um, stop there? How long have we been talking for? An hour. <laughs> oh man. Now, I was saying, before we go, we should actually finalise a really, really cool video game character for you. Surely there has been a fat man as a video game character who's not a villain and does not die. Who's like a protagonist. Does, or at least plays an important role. I have nothing. Oh, Mario? <laughs> we should do best in the Mario though. <coughs> I think we found a gigantic gap in the market. Yeah. Come on. Um. Well, there's a well, there's a super fat princess. Think about that one. Fat Princess? I'm not talking about Peach, are we? No, Fat Princess is another video game that's very much separate from Nintendo. Indie. Okay. But then again, she's a woman, so that doesn't count. Yeah. Come on, some fat, white, fat male protagonist who doesn't die. It is good. Uh. Uh. Surely that has to be something. And so we're not counting Mass Effect or like The Sims where you can actually make a protagonist fat. Yes. We're talking about fat from the beginning. Yes. Damn it. Uh, Tune in next week when we'll actually try and find <laughs> a male protagonist that resembles myself. This is this has been as yet undecided. You can contact us on as yet undecided at gmail dot com, or no as yet undecided podcast. Okay, at gmail dot com, and what other Sophie? Okay, you can contact me on Sophie nine seven o nine on most platforms apart from Instagram. And you can contact me on the Manus. It's T H E M A R N U S. Happy Mother's Day! Also, if you can find a game that has mic features in it, it'll be lovely. Thank you very much. Well, oh, <laughs> stay safe. Don't get weird. Happy Mother's Day, Nasa. I'm going to die again. Hey! No poking! No poking! <laughs>